Tires. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Monday, the 28th of October. I want you to show this chart. I mean to show it to my subscribers when I do my hour long uh, video every weekend, uh, usually Fridays. Uh, getting everybody ready over the weekend to see what's going, what we're anticipating for the following week, and what has happened, what is happening, and what we're expecting. But I did forget. I, I, I'm not. I'm just not sure. I can't remember if I showed this chart. I had it already, and I'm not not sure if I put it up. This is just a black. And I want to see if the black background. Yes, everything shows. All that I want to show here is this. You see this horizontal line here. This is the Dow daily chart, black background. Uh, the green and pink moving average there is really the uh, nine period moving average goes positive when it goes over the black line and it goes negative, it goes pink when it's under the 14 period exponential moving average. At this point today, it has just gone S, meaning the nine has just flipped to the negative posture, but the day is young, anything can happen. But look at this. You see this horizontal trend line in the stochastics, the slow stochastic. Well, look how it bumps up against there, and every time it pulls back, there is some some reaction in the uh, price of whatever you're following. But this is even more important. This is the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence. I drew a horizontal line here, and you can see there there were a few occasions where that down arrow coincided exactly with some kind of a pullback. But look at the way the MACD, for those of you who are interested in the moving average convergence divergence, I've done webinars on this, where I discuss how every once in a while you get the MACD. A lot of people use this because they say it conforms to the pattern that you're following. But actually, now, I, am I going to do this right now? As we, Am I going to do some trading? Oh, let me think about that. Let me just move this over here. I just need to see this. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm going to just have to hold off. All right. So as we're looking at this, you'll see how sharply the MACD pulled back, back in the uh, end of 2023, uh, into the low of uh, May. But look at this. The stochastic was put making lower highs and lower lows. But the nine period moving average kept you in the trade. A fantastic tool. And look what happened. That would have fooled you completely. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. Look at the way the down arrow coincides exactly with, with some kind of a top, short-term top, right? Getting a little quicker and quicker. So as I'm looking at this right now, oh, I don't know if I should. Let me just do my own little homework here. I decided I'm going to do this. If I need to do it, I need to do it. Yeah, okay, if I do that, and then I do that. Okay, as it says right now, what we're looking at is, sorry to move the charts around like that, but I just need to do some homework there. I wanted to show you that there is a tool that says, in the short term, the Dow has pulled back enough, coinciding with this horizontal line. In fact, I'm going to move it up just a fraction to see if it goes exactly on the line. Yep, it did. It's exactly on the line. And it's pulled back. So that's just one little indicator. Say, just be a little cautious right now based on that technical indicator. Now let's go to, um, let me go to this chart right here. And that just says that within the context of the notation. I decided about a week ago, and I confirmed it over on Friday, Thursday and Friday, and then I did it over the weekend again, and I feel very comfortable saying that the Dow made a peak D top if I use that phantom peak, which I've been talking about as part of the legitimate usage of the Chapman Wave methodology at 41,585 back in uh, early September. Then it pulled back, 
And then what happened is we, we had a really good run. Hmm, I don't like that. We had a really good run from the low of September the 11th at uh, 39,993 all the way to peak A, peak B, peak C. Then we pulled back to 41,831 and continued higher. So that's a gray A because it's under that peak C. But then I said, I'm not going to, I'm calling this a D and I'm calling that an E at 43,325. And I'm then going to say, it is a cell signal. I haven't yet got a cell mode. That's really important. A cell mode means that there's a good chance that you've increased the, the selling pressure or the technicals have seen the, the selling pressure increase. And therefore, there should be probably lower lows to come. This just says, because the 9 pre moving average today has gone S, meaning that the 9 has gone under the 14. The day is young. I've got to wait until 4 o'clock to see if that continues. Because if there is a rally coming up, and I suspect that there's going to be another attempt at 10.20, what is the time right now, 10.12, to at least try for another rally, um, we'll see what happens. So that's what it stands at right now. We are still long. We haven't got any short positions. But this is very important because, look, he has the weekly chart on the Dow. And the weekly chart has all the technical indicators very strong. MACD's pulled back, but it's still good. The uh, stochastic's flat at 90%. That's the best thing you can have. Whereas in the daily chart, it's down at 37%. That's usually saying, oops, you got yourself some weakness intrinsically. But the 9P moving average says there's still internal strength. Well, we've got to wait for the end of the day on that particular, uh, in that regard. The weekly chart is an E. It could be an instant restart. I'm calling it E for now, peak E, because there was a lower high all of last week. And the monthly chart is in leg E. In the Chevrolet methodology, especially when you're getting to monthly charts, when you get to D, E, F, even a G, you've got to be a little careful there because that's where other things can happen. All right, I just want to make that clear. Other things meaning that at peak D, a yellow light will flash. And in this particular instance, it turned out to be a potential instant restart. But this, the height of this leg after that instant reset, restart is very much like this. I use this as an example. Um, SOLV, Solven Solventum. Look what happened. It had an instant restart. But that leg E was so strong that I said, that's going to be an E, maybe it goes to an F, but it's not an instant restart because there's a good chance it's going to pull back quite sharply and then have another rally. And if it takes out the left side high of 73.40, you've got to be considering that it is in, in a pretty strong move to the upside. So let me just do this again, because a chart is a chart, doesn't matter what time frame. This leg D, strong leg E, says, yes, you could pull back. But as long as, look at that nine-period moving average, way over the 14, it would say to get that monthly chart of the Dow, the green nine-period moving average pink, you'd probably have to see 37,600, something like that. I mean, that's, you know, 5,000 points, Dow points. So at this particular point, I'm regarding this as very bullish in the monthly chart bullish in the uh, weekly chart and short term a little shaky in the uh, daily. Let's go to the S&P. We'll do the same thing. I was asked about this by a couple of people over the weekend. I said I'll go through it thoroughly today. Dow is up 250. We'll be right back. Puzzle Channel. Time to take questions out. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, Rose. Let me just write these questions down. I'll be, yeah, okay, here we go. So um, I'm going to go back to that. So I'm just going to finish up and say, in terms of the S&P, the monthly chart is in leg F. There it is, uh, that is... Uh, instant restart continued with a sharp pullback and then it went to a leg F, calling it F for now. It's above this very long-term inside track uh, repellent zone and it's done that uh, out of the last one, two, three, four, five, five months. It's touched the pink or green line five times and that's really important. But I have this as a peak D, uh, peak C in the uh, weekly chart. It should go to a D just above 58, 78, 46. Um, so, so far, the technicals, the nine period moving average in the S&P daily is still very strong, weekly is strong, monthly is very, very strong. And the unbalanced volume is the one thing in, all, in the weekly and monthly charts that says we're a little bit overbought. And it says, so I, I should have done this with the Dow as well. Where would very strong support be going into the next three weeks, say? Uh, let's go most of November, right, because of the election. Well, I would say... <clears throat> If the S&P takes out on a closing basis 50, let me go to this level right here. That's the low. I didn't want to mess up that Fibonacci right there. It's got there. So if the S&P takes out this low that was made on the 20th of September, 56.74, about 160 points away from where we are on the downs, if it takes that out any time, it says, be careful, because my, my impression right now, based on all the technicals, is that if there is a pullback, I'm expecting 8% to maybe 12%. I will increase that depending on how weekly charts act. But at this particular point, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Look at the QQQ. The QQQ made a peak D. Well, maybe it's not a peak D, but today's a leg D. There may be a peak D at 498.52. High-level consolidation, 9 over the 14. Very good. MACD is a bit weak. Retro strength is a little bit weak. Stochastic is weak at 74%. On balance volume is a little bit overbought. But that nine-period moving average um, in the monthly chart has 503.32 as an alternate count F slash B. But under that, we've got a gray A, a gray B, and I have to call it a blue C because that stochastic's at 90%, and that's very good. So, so far, it's in this rectangle formation that has a rule that says uh, a rectangle formation, a large rectangle formation, 
If it starts to make, if it pulls back very sharply and it starts to make higher highs and higher lows, could very well go just under, right on, or just above the previous high, and that must hold because if it takes out halfway of the uh, support level, that would be four. I'd make it at four, just somewhere around there. Just eyeball it. Four seventy-four. If four seventy-four is taken out any time in uh, November, that's going to be a problem because it could go down to the 450s. But I'm still waiting for a leg D. When we get leg D, and I think it'll be, a, could be in the next uh, week, um, in the monthly chart, that makes it now vulnerable to some kind of a pullback. What's the pullback that I would consider uh, for in the 474 to 470 area? That's going to be key initial major support if there is some kind of a sharp sell-off. On the upside, well, upside's open because they're all-time highs. So uh, I, I could do measured moves, but I don't want to do that right now. So let's go to the NDX. Um, let's go to the Comp in Index. That is the much broader uh, NASDAQ Composite Index has already gone to a leg E. Uh, the, uh, this is interesting because on a purely technical basis, within three bars after peak D, if you make a higher high, that's a chamber of instant restart. I have to tell you that if everything actually comes together very well, um, it could be quite an exciting 2025. But in the meantime, I have to be somewhat cautious. And I did give this a, gray, a, a peak A, and now it's got a gray A, B. And because it made a higher high, this is a leg C. There should still be a D before there's a pretty serious pullback. Uh, that usually occurs after a D. And we've already got a D in the daily chart. Remember, Chapman Wave methodology, always looking for those peak Ds, the fourth highest peak. That's where other things can happen. So summing it up, uh, this particular, just right now, I see nothing negative, but I do see some stalling action. And I see some uh, rotation in the sense that because certain stocks are slowing down the upside, others are trying to take up the slack, this rotation says, that's the reason why there's there have just been modest highs, even though they're highs um, in the daily chart. Look, there's your peak A, there's your peak B, pulls back, and slightly higher C, slightly higher D within this jam wave inside track repellent zone. That's kind of what we're looking at. I must go to the SMHs. I need to do this. It's going to take a little time. I need to finish this. The SMHs right now are down 29 cents at 252.57. I think this is the clue to say, if the, if the uh, semiconductors are stalling instead of leading, then you've got to have, uh, I don't necessarily say one foot on the brake, one foot on the accelerator. You just have to have some kind of um, cautionary stance, but it also depends on what your positions are. For instance, in the chat for, the, for my, my subscribers to my opening call, we're in all different areas. And, and somehow or other, we're, we're under the radar in a number of stocks right now, doing very nicely. So that's really important. So as I, I see it, I see it with 1020, I said, I think that there'll be another move to the upside. Just want to check on the E-mini. Yep, there's your break leg C in the one-minute chart, leg B in the uh, five-minute chart. That peak A is still a peak A, and you've got a gray A underneath it. So far... A nice improvement in the uh, very near-term uh, near stances uh, for the E-mini. Okay, so the SMHs, semiconductors, it's kind of a clue to say it's very specialized. NVIDIA made it an all-time high about five sessions ago, which was 144.32. Tried to test it on Friday, didn't get there, just missed it, and today's a little bit weaker. But it's a high-level consolidation, still looking really good. I need you at the same time. I had a question about it, so I'll include that right now. Yeah, is GE done for now? Um, yes, I think GE. Now, that's going to be – I spent a little time on, this, on the weekend, and I said, you know what, I'm not going to do this. If I have a chance Monday or Tuesday, I'll do it live. I've got a PC with a doji candle in the weekly, a G stash C in the monthly – and a C1, C2 at 194.80 double top in the daily. I think GE is taking a breather. And that, to me, together with the semiconductor, says there's a good reason to think we're rotating now through different sectors. And that's going to be really important because now the biggies, like a GE, can have a bit of a breather. Now, um, as I see it, this instant restart is really the clue. So would that be A, B, C, 
DE. Is this an E slash C? Is this very much like what we had to do with the Dow? Well, uh, Dow chart, I think that's the case. I think this is actually more like an E uh, in the weekly chart. Therefore, um, I think that the 188 area is very strong resistance for General Electric. And I wouldn't be surprised if it tests the one. Uh, it's a 176 right now, 162 to 158 level over the next uh, two, three weeks. Yes, I hope you answered your question there. And GE, uh, GEHC, which is the healthcare sector. Whoops, I typed in the wrong place. Is that another break? That was really quick. It is another break. Uh, GEHC. Yes, that's pulling back as well. Um, all right, we'll be back. A nice move to the upside in the E mini right now at 5878 at 31 points. I'll be right back. That's the captain. Tiger technicians out. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. All right, we're back, and the Dow, the gold is unchanged at 2754, holding very nicely. Silver 
is trading um, up just 10 cents. I'm still calling that a peak C. I think there will still be one more pop to the upside. Uh, we're going to high-grade copper. High-grade copper right now is uh, unchanged at 0 0.005 at 4.36. Yeah, just unchanged. Uh, now, this is going to be very important. Look at crude oil. Crude oil took a huge dive. And I've been talking about this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone for so long. This whole area between that green and pink line, that channel, mini channel, whoop, got repels of 65.47 is the weekly 200-period um, exponential moving average support. Most importantly, what we're looking at here is within the context of um, the different sectors, I'd spent some time on this uh, on Friday, Thursday and Friday, actually, uh, on Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, I see the weekly chart has got this cup formation. I think that the low, I anticipated that the lower highs and much lower lows would change at some point, and you start to see higher highs and higher lows. I think that's the case right now. The day is young or the week is young. But I would I would say that if there is a move above the previous high that was just a few sessions ago, and that is that the Bitcoin futures 70.260. Uh, if we can go just a tad above that, that's going to be really important this week because it extends leg C. And then we can start looking at this candle right here candle of the week of the 2nd of August with a high of 72,220. So it's a work in progress. I like it. I said this is a kind of a cup formation in the uh, daily chart, huge cup formation in the weekly chart, and a cup and handle, and I related it to the IYT, which is the transportation index, having a nice move up today, up 70 cents at 70.24, having this pattern. And patterns regard doesn't matter where it is in the market, when patterns start to form, for some reason, it's it's a, a fractal that just becomes, um, it imbues itself elsewhere. It doesn't matter whether it's related or not related as a sector, the, cha the chart pattern forms. And I'd say there's a chance that the Bitcoin is going to form this cup, like the IYT, the transportation uh, shares did. <clears throat> when they were hit 70 a whole bunch of times back in 21 and 22. And then uh, they made a low at the end of 2020, uh, in October of 2022 at 48.18, ran to a new recovery high, peak D, pulls back, and here's your handle. Not one of my favorite patterns unless you get it exactly right uh, in the lower part of the handle because then it goes higher and then it always comes back and retests. So as I see it right now, that's the pattern. Let's just go back to GBTC. That is the Bitcoin Investment Trust. You can see slightly different pattern, but it's the same concept of a cup formation. Breaks out, pulls back, and makes this handle pattern right here. Monthly chart so far is really a beautiful chap wave green uh, Roman candle, but we've got days to go before the month finishes. But it is a leg C at this particular point in the daily chart and a leg C in the new notation of the monthly there it is a b oh it's a leg d we've gone to a leg d this d has to be much higher it can't just be a little nominal d after peak c because that's usually not a big positive this has to run all week you've got to see the bitcoin rally uh rally much higher um okay what i'm going to do right now is the next question came in oh gdx so gdx Trading leg D in the weekly chart, leg D in the monthly chart, a G slash C in the in the daily chart of the market vectors, gold miners ETF. You know, I've not been impressed with many of the gold stocks. A couple have done fabulously, but a lot have done very, very poorly. I mean, AEM is one of the leaders chart-wise. It's gone to a higher high. Uh, three days, three sessions ago, it went up into the 80 and 89 area, 88, 89. Weekly chart leg E, monthly chart did this beautiful left side, right side price time match. It's one week, one month late to get to 89.23. And what happens in this particular pattern, if it gets very close and it's late, very often it goes much higher. So it could go to 91 or 92 AEM, uh, Agnico Eagle mines and then pulls back into that like a cup and handle pattern. So we'll see you see these patterns are forming all over the show in different sectors. Now another question came in. Uh, so Tesla, Tesla, 
in a way, you've got yourself a cup and handle here. Look, it's kind of a cup and a very large handle. It's more like a W pattern. Is this, the big question for me is, is this a brand new A in the daily chart or is it an E? I, I said I'm not going to do anything until I did some work over the weekend, which I did, but I didn't actually type it in. I'm giving it the alternate count to say, I, I really don't know. I have my suspicions, but I'm suspecting that the breakout from the 200 period moving average uh, th four sessions ago, where it was uh, tootling along in the two, two, uh, tw uh, 12 to 14 area, and then had a huge gap up with a huge island reversal on Thursday, Friday, had a massive move up, and today it's even higher at 272.12. Uh, it, it has the characteristic because the stochastic is at 71% rallying, but it hasn't gone to 80%. It has a characteristic that says, if it's able to hold 260 support over the next full week and a half, so that's like seven or eight sessions, and in fact goes to 277, that is, that's probably going to be an A, and it's going to go to a B, C, and a D. But as it stands right now, it's very positive. And the weekly chart has gone to a new leg, overlapping. It's called the wave. Oh, I did not write that in. I wrote it in a different chart. So over, so this is a chap wave, overlapping wave to D. So I always do this. I type it in. I keep it there. Uh, forget about something here. <laughs> So let's just go there, overlapping wave to D. I make it gray and I make it very small so that it's just sitting there so that I can go back and say, oh, yeah, there it is, overlapping wave. What is the overlapping wave? I'll make this nine and gray. Nine and gray. I'll make it very light so that it just fits in right nicely. Yeah. So what is this? This is where you go to a peak C, pull 271 round number high, back in, I think it was, say, July of this year, pulls back very sharply to 180, almost 100 points, and then goes back, gray A, gray B, gray C. I haven't changed the color. And that C pulls back, and then what happens is, when it takes out this C right here, for those of you who use Chapman Wave methodology, at, one, at 264.86, it goes to 264.87, breaks it by one penny, that becomes the new leg D, and invariably, almost always, it takes out the left side C, so you get an overlapping wave to D, and then you've got to be careful because it comes back and you test the lip at 271. Well, that's tested, looking very good so far. I'll be back. Oh, time's flying, yeah? Dow is up 301, and the s and is up 28. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour. I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? 
Don't let the market leave you in the dust. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so we are back and I needed to look at, so the question came out, did that, CMG. So CMG, uh, Chipotle uh, is up its leg D in the very quick and very small rally to a D in the weekly chart, peak C should go to a leg D in the monthly chart. But I was going to go back and have a look at this just to double check. So that high um, in May of 2023 was 42.80. The very next month, it goes to 42.88. So this is a question that I had. In fact, it's one of those things that if I never discovered, I would have just I would have missed a lot of moves. Do I use a phantom peak there and say that should be a, a, a red or a pink B and that's a, a C and that's a D to get there quicker to know that I've gotten to a D and I'm ready. But we don't have any position, but I'm saying for people who are along, I decided not to do that. I decided just to keep it as clean as possible and have it as a peak C at 69, uh, 29 or 26 back in June of 2024, pulls back very sharp due to the 40s, and then goes back, and now it's in a, this kind of move with very strong green candles. In the monthly, the weekly is looking good because the MACD did cross positive and the stochastics at 85, uh, but it's a very quick peak. And you remember, this low here cannot be a peak A. You cannot have the low also be the peak except in the in the at a peak D. So this, you have to wait for a trough. You have to wait for a higher low to start your wave count. So that's your A, that's your B, that's your C, and that's your D. So, so far, that's very good action in the weekly chart, but the high was way back there in the 69s. So let's go to the uh, daily chart, CMG. Just need to check on my time because there are a bunch of other questions that are coming in here. Yes. So look at this. This is a that's your first peak right there. That's A, uppercase on the way up. That's your B. And I think by a fraction, it made a higher high there. So that's a C. So let me double check. That high was at 60.09 on the 15th of October. And this is a little bit 60.10. Uh, I thought it was one penny higher. And that gives it a C. And now you've got to a D. 
and it's a very strong candle. So this so far, hey, what was the question? Oh my. Um, oh, let me see if I can find it real quickly. So there was a question, could I look at or did you already have a position? I think it was a position. Yes, yeah, CMG, please. I have November 55 calls, earnings tomorrow. Oh, oh, oh. So I always have a terrible time with CMG in terms of earnings. Um, and one of the reasons is that very often the price is doing so nicely, you say, oh, if the earnings come out, this is this should be really good. And the earnings disappoint and it tumbles. Or it's the exact opposite. It's just doing nothing. <clears throat> earnings come out. For some reason, they're great earnings. The way I'm looking at it right now, just on a chart formation, it seems to me that the earnings should be quite good. Maybe not great, but quite good. So how the market responds is going to be very important. So, Zip, you've done your homework, so that's why you've got the calls, and you know that there's going to be earnings tomorrow. So you've prepared for that. This is the way I would look at it. This is a leg D. A D, anything can happen. Look, the last D had a big pullback from the 59 area down to 50, 50 just under 56. So that, that's a three-point pullback. It's one of the deeper pullbacks it's had in a little while. So you've got to be ready for anything. But all the technicals are suggesting that it should try. It could be overnight. Maybe the earnings, maybe the conference calls something different. But at 60 at uh, 6113 right now, it looks to me like it really wants to tag the 62 and a half to 63 area. But looking and and that's why for a long time I've just stopped doing anything when it comes to earnings unless we have a position that I don't care what the earnings like Bank of America I didn't care what the earnings were it was doing well we've been in it for a long time it's in the right area it has been in the right area but that might change in a week but so far it's the right area I didn't care. And it came out, and yep, it popped to the upside, and then it gave a little bit back, and then it's held very nicely. So <clears throat> that's all I can say is you've done your homework. What I would do is if there's whatever it is on, so tomorrow, so that's choose on Wednesday morning at 9.30, you want CMG to be rallying sharply. If you got calls, you don't want to do it overnight and then have a lousy open. You want it to be rallying. And if it's rallying, I'm going to make two suggestions. No, one suggestion with two things. One is immediately if there's a rally, just take something off. And the other is take something off and raise your stop on the other position because that could actually hold because this very small peak C, little tiny pullback, and now a candle going to a D is the kind of candle that it should not be a small leg D failure and pull back. You want this D to be as strong as possible. Look at that D all the way. Look at that. That's what you want to see. So you, if, if it starts to really run you strongly and hold into the 10.30 time frame on Wednesday, just keep holding it. That would be a great position. Here's why. <laughs> because the monthly chart says it should still go to a D. I have not used the phantom peak right there. I might have to if there's, in fact, a, a seven-point pullback uh, more than a 10% pullback over the next uh, two days after the earnings report, I'd say mm, maybe that's, that really was a phantom A, a phantom B, a real C, and a D, and that's that's your already made a D. I'm not doing that right now. Everything looks like it's doing well. It's in the right area, so we'll see what happens. Okay. With that said, um, question came in. ENVX earnings tomorrow. And so this has been a very big, we once had this and then we got out. We didn't have to touch it forever. This is a stock, Enovix um, Corporation, Silicon. Uh, well, it's a battery development, 3D cell architecture. But look how it's, it's really struggled in the monthly chart. Weekly chart went to a peak E in the 18s, plummets down to the 7s, and now it's trying to hit the 200 period moving average three days ago, 13, and now it's at 11. So I can't tell anything from this. It's so ziggy and zaggy that I'm just going to say, I don't know what it's going to do. My, my guess is that they've been in the business long enough to surprise to the upside, but they haven't done it yet. Uh, well, lately it's been a pretty nice move. A, B, peak, C. Yeah, 
uh, trading at 11.27, up 87. I'll do a little more and I'll be back in a moment. We'll also do FXI. I'll be there uh, in a second. Basil Chapman, time. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Let me just do this real quick. This is the final segment. Uh, MSTR, MicroStrategy, Inc., A shares, new all time high, 249, uh, 68. I've got this as a GCSC. Everything looks very good. Um, could be getting a little bit toppy in the daily. There's a leg C in the weekly chart, so there's a very strong leg E in the monthly chart. SLV, which is the silver, this is, <coughs> excuse me, this is the iShares Silver Trust, leg E in the monthly chart. I'm calling this a C in the weekly chart. I don't see any reason why it should be anything else. And I'm still calling it a, a peak C in the daily, so it should go slightly higher. I mentioned this earlier, about 31, uh, 30, uh, 31.80. 3181 will start leg D. That's what I'm anticipating there. So to sum up, uh, so far, everything that I'm looking at is still very strong. The Dow has had a somewhat of a pullback. It's up nicely today, 338. I'm suspecting there's a rally. How it handles 43,000, it's at 42,451 right now. How it handles the 42,900 to 43,100 area if it can get there in the next few days, is going to be really important. If it takes out 42,000 support, that's something else. I, my bias right now is to still be long, to have no shorts. We've added um, in, in a different area completely on Friday. That's doing very nicely. It's just, it's just I try to be as under the radar as possible, looking at areas that seem to be 
unaffected by, say, elections or anything like that, just at this particular point, that's going to be really important. So with that said, I'm going to hand you over to Steve Rose. I hope you had a great time. I think it was in New York City. I believe the weather was great. And um, so great programming here at uh, TFNN. And um, have a great day. And I'll be back uh, tomorrow. Check out my Open Call Daily Newsletter. Uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I hope so. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you for being here.